What's going on guys, still here. And today, while working on a much longer form video, to kinda keep myself going here, I decided to take a quick break and make a tier list video on uh, the top tier main battle tanks in War Thunder. Uh, I actually thought about doing this the other day because I was responding to a comment on Semi Cooperative's uh, 2S38 video, which uh, if you haven't already, go check that out. He also made a really good uh, video about the Abrams situation. Honestly, probably the most, like, I would say impartial, like unbiased take on it, like explanation, if you will, uh, that I've seen about it. I never ended up getting my video done with it. I just, I kind of looked into some stuff and I'm like, I really don't know what to think anymore. I have a few minor opinions about it, but if you want me to make a short video on that, just let me know in the comments of this one. So I was responding to a comment some guy just asked me i was i made a post about the 2s38 and was getting in an argument with other people different subject for a different day but uh one one person asked me my opinion on the abrams and i kind of gave them a long thing about it and then he just like thought like where i'd place it among other uh, main battle tanks and i kind of gave like a weird like little tier list so i figured i might as well actually make an official video doing it because why not and I feel like I can get my thoughts out better in this as well. Hey guys, editing still here. Just want to say that I spent like four minutes doing a tangent here explaining some of the caveats with the comparisons, but I'm just going to try and shorten it up here for you really quickly. I will be comparing some of the variants combined in here. There's going to be just some weird nuance, mainly like with the Swedish Leopard 2s because the armor packages and all that are so similar to each other. Uh, and the M1A 2s I will be pretty much combining as well. Same with the Arietis. So... Just keep that in mind. I also uh, did add the T80 BVM to this list because for some reason it was not. It is literally the other ultimate top tier MBT for the Russian tree currently and the Black Knight as well considering that's like a real proper challenger. I do go into why the challenger tank demonstrator is a little bit different later on but you'll just have to stick around for that. Uh, so yeah, still trying to make this quick. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys make it to the end. Uh, leave a comment and like uh, if you haven't already and uh, yeah, back to the video. All right, getting started here. The M1A2 SEP V2. Obviously, like I just said, it's the heaviest Abrams in the entire tech tree. The SEP V1 and the M1A2, I'm going to kind of just group these all together generally. Because in the end of the day, another big caveat here is with top tier, uh, over the years, there's been points where certain tanks have a round that are pretty much able to lull pen uh, their competition. And now we've kind of reached this point where while there are powerful rounds like DM-53 and 3BM-60 and I'm in, uh, M829A2, uh, the general weak spots that you're going to be shooting depending on the tank will vary a little bit. You might be able to pen a little bit extra here and there. Um, but the general like weak points that you're going to be shooting kind of have homogenized given the armor protection and the rounds that we're using because we haven't gotten to different kinds of rounds like 3BM59 for Russia and all that stuff. But anyway, so the Abrams, like everybody knows, the Abrams has a big turret wing, uh, wing? Yeah, turret ring weakness. The turret ring being, you know, way too easy to shoot. I have my own opinions about that, uh, not to get on a rant about that, but uh, the turret ring weak point is a very glaring weakness, but when the Abrams is actually in a haul down position and you're working a ridge line, as long as you don't take a shot to the, the bottom of the chin, of the turret, if you will, uh, you'll actually do just fine with it. The M1A1 not having DU inserted in, into it was like the biggest weakness at the time. So when we got the M1A2 with the DU uh, inserted turret cheeks, like the M1A2 actually became like a pretty solid MBT for haul down. Um, there are still weaknesses, obviously, but uh, the M1A2, honestly, Personally, with the reload buff, the M1A2 and all the other 120 equipped Abrams would have been in B tier because of the glaring weakness, but with the reload buff, they're in A tier for me, personally. I don't think the Abrams is broken in any way. I do think the reload buff was kind of unnecessary, uh, personally. I think for the V2 specifically, they should have just given it a DU modifier in the hull to at least prevent the overall like penetratable area like down a little bit especially at range if you happen to whiff a shot even with the high accuracy at top tier and laser range finders if you whiff a shot on the abrams in the lower plate and it has that du insert and it stops it then i mean it's whatever you can make a follow-up shot if if possible whatever again it's it's like real real really weird and circumstantial 
Um, but the, the M1A2 specifically, if it had a hull insert buff of some kind, it would probably still be A tier, but for right now, the reload buff kind of carries it. The Leopard 2A7 is... It's hard for me to say because... Let me group the the 122B in this as well, uh, the B+. So for me personally, I'm going to say the 122B+, and the PLSS, and the uh, 122A, all of these together are the, like obviously the most S tier. With the introduction of spall liners, the spall liners have, on top of the Leopards already having improved armor, especially now the 2A7 over the 2A6, the spall liner helps eat shots as well. So the overall protection of the 122B, I would say this is the most well-protected main battle tank in the entire game, personally, especially out of the, the Western uh, variety. So I'm kind of in like a weird in-between because the 2A7, while it does have the L55 with DM53, like I said, you're... The weak points you're really going to be penning on a lot of MBTs have homogenized, especially like with the the uh, Soviet variety in the in the Chinese. So DM53 on the L55 isn't as potent as I would say that it could be. Um, I'm not familiar if the Germans have if it's like DM56 or something. Don't I believe don't they have a more powerful round now? But I don't know if we even know information on it. So like. If the Leopard was given a round that could just straight up punch through Relic or something. Um, if you're punching through Relic, then you're punching through pretty much anything. So, uh, on like an angled surface. So, for me personally, the 2A7 is an A tier over the 122B. But overall, the improved armor um, on the front, like the 122A, if you're familiar with that, the 122B Plus, the newest one we got, has a lot of extra side armor, like a pleak armor and stuff, that helps maybe like eat a side shot if you're over angled for some reason. Um, but the 2A7V, the biggest advantage over the 2A6 is the add on armor. The Leopard 2 PSO is kind of a weird one. I didn't really play it in a real match, but the PSO kind of just seemed basically like a 2A5 with an armor package in it. I mean, it. I don't believe it has the add-on armor on the front like the 2A7 does, but if it does, then I would probably put it at A tier over the 2A7. So the PSO is kind of there. The 2A6 would be like a B tier now, personally, because the 2A6, all it has is the gun. And yeah, you have the spot, the spall liner and all that stuff. But uh, the 2A6, like, the 2A6 is your backup now. The 2A7 is your main bread and butter. The 2A6 would be your backup. So 2A6 would be like A tier. PSO would probably be A or B tier, and the 2A7 will just be S tier because with the spall liner, with DM53 and the L55 cannon, and that extra add on armor on the front, uh, if you know what you're doing in the 2A7, like you're going to do just as fine as you would in the in the 122B. So I'm just going to leave it at S tier for everybody else so they don't flip out on me. But personally, over the, the 122B+, the, the B, PLSS, and the A, I would say that the 2A7 is technically like a an A plus tier, or like an S minus. That's just my opinion, because the differences like are very, very subtle, but also kind of not at the same time if you look on paper. So for the 2A7, I'll leave it at S tier. The T90M. I'm going to group the BVM with this as well. Uh, I'm going to leave the VT4 out of this. VT4, when I get to that, I'm going to group that with the the WZ-1001 and the 99-3. Uh, uh, but for the T80 and the T90, the T80 is an S-tier MBT. The T90 is A-tier, personally. So, And I'll get to this with the Chinese in a minute. The BVM having, obviously, be faster than the 90M. Uh, another thing... The T-80s have a low ground pressure compared to all the other MBTs in the game. So if you remember during the uh, terrain changes, we've had like at least two major ones over the la uh, last few years that I can recall. The T-80s have pretty much always been unaffected by terrain uh, changes and traction changes because uh, they have a lower ground pressure than other uh, main battle tanks, and it's lower than it probably should be. So the T-80 can pretty much almost instantly accelerate Versus other MBTs like the Arietes, even before the AMV package, where their gear ratios aren't correct. So they just take forever to shift into each gear and they accelerate weird. So that's just down to Gaijin modeling. But the T80 BVM is like 
the fa- it's the fastest Russian MBT. It's arguably the most well protected as well, in my opinion. Obviously, the T90M's turret is a little bit more protected from like those angle shots, the way that the turret's shaped. Um, but the BVM, on in my opinion, the BVM was added too early. I think honestly, the BVM could have been added um, in between like the Leopard 2A7 and and all this stuff. I think when the BVM was added against the 2A6, it was almost too strong. I think the T90M would have been a better fit. Kind of a weird swap there. I think the T90M was a bit too late into the game um, because the the 6.5 second reload in the autoloader, obviously with a lot of the NATO MBTs being ace crew of a 6 second or now the Abrams 5 or even like the Type 10, which is 4, it's not the fastest. But given that it's a 6.5 second auto loader, when you lose a crew member, that load uh, that load time is unchanged. So for overall like survivability in battle, the BVM and the with the reload speed, 3BM60, the relic all over the fucking thing, I would say that it's arguably the best uh, Russian MBT in the game. Uh, another weird thing is like the Russians. We are all familiar with the fuel tanks for a while there. The fuel tanks pretty much were a guaranteed uh, stop of any shot in the game, no matter the angle, you could basically hit the edge of a fuel tank with like M829A3 or, or A2, sorry, and like it would just stop the round completely because just Gaijin, right? Um, the BVM, it's also notorious unless you're some, some people. Uh, even back back in the day, like we've had rounds be changed over time, but CL3143, which is what the Arietis fired, um, that round was the heaviest damaging round in game until M829A1 was added, I believe, or A2. Um, so you could shoot the side of a T80 or, or like a, a, T9, a T72B3 or T90A or something. Mainly, it's more so in the BVM because of all the relic uh, and all the other shit with volumetric armor and all that stuff. You can literally shoot the ammo rack through the side of the turret of the MBTs most known for exploding when they get sneezed at from the side. And watch it pass through the entire ammo bustle. It could pass through the shells. It could pass through the propellant. It doesn't matter. There, there was no difference. And the tank just won't explode. There's just a weird chance for the BVM specifically, or especially the BVM, I should say, that to it just doesn't it just doesn't get ammo racked as much as other Russian MBTs. I think it really has to do with how much like relic is stopping things, plus volumetric shells, changes to round spalling and all that stuff. So the BVM is the is the MBT that I would say is the one that as long as you have eyes and know what you're doing, the BVM is virtually noob proof. Like I I literally I put a friend who really doesn't play War Thunder but plays video games into BVM, and they still went ham with it. Like it's it's vir, it's virtually noob proof. The T90M, the difference being, um. The speed is one major factor. I think for the T90M is still pretty okay once it gets going, but the the BVM just like I said with the ground pressure and all those changes, uh, the T80 BVM is is just way faster than it. The T90M, while being just I would say as well protected as the BVM frontally and all that stuff, like the weak spots are virtually the same. Um, the T90M is just in a weird spot. The mobility. Uh, doesn't allow you to like shift around as easily. It's still improved over like even the B3 and uh, especially like the T90 and stuff. Uh, but the the T90M having the major weakness of the 7.1 second auto loader. Uh, so you s- reload slower than the BVM. You definitely re slower than most of the competition. Um, the T90M. Personally, while I love the look of the T90M, it was like my favorite MBT in Armored Warfare back before we even got close to these kinds of vehicles. The T90M just really doesn't cut it for me. So it's A tier because it's still potent like the BVM, but it just has those weaknesses that doesn't make it S tier. And mainly it's down to the reload and and the speed difference. Uh, Moving on to the Chinese, the VT4, the ZTZ99-3, and the WZ1001E are all going to be grouped under this specific photo. Um, the 99-3 I've played with a test drive. That also goes for like the uh, the Challenger Black Knight. I didn't play the Challenger 3. The Type 10 and the Merkava 4. I had these vehicles on test drive and I played them for a very limited amount of time. Um, but like I've 
I've played enough of top tier and I own enough of them, like the Leclerc, the 122s, and the Abrams and all that stuff to kind of get the general gist of them. Uh, so the 99-3 kind of being the weakest of the three, personally, like it's just basically, it's just a 99 with ERA and stuff. The 1001 kind of fixed some of the mobility issues, I believe it was, with the 99-3. The VT4, I don't know if this is like a bug or what, but the VT4's transmission, when you hover over it in game, um, shows a slower reverse speed than both the 99-3 and the 1001. Uh, so in reverse, it's, I guess, got worse mobility. Uh, the VT4, I will say, though, is very similar in armor protection to the other two. And having active protection helps. Active protection helps stop a Toe 2B or I think I think it could stop even Hellfires. I haven't really played around with APS too much recently. I don't know if they made any changes to it. But uh, APS being there is just another way to protect yourself from certain threats. So APS is definitely a plus. Um, but it's on A tier with the, the T90M because... Like the T90M, it has a 7.1 second autoloader. All all the Chinese top tier MBTs do. They have the slower autoloader. Uh, the uh, Chinese MBTs also have a more glaring weak point. Their lower plate is literally twice the size of the T90 and the T80. It's very easy in the open to just shoot that, and you've pretty much knocked out the 99. The 99 is super weak. All of these Chinese MBTs are super weak when they're playing in just like a general environment without hiding that lower plate i would say out of like the eastern variety it's literally the easiest to kill on top of that if you look at the armor of the 99 and the vt4 uh compared to the t80 bvm and the t90 which i forgot to even touch on the weak point around the breach is also like twice as big the era doesn't cover some of it it's not even as thick you can still breach a bvm or a t90m but the way volumetric shells works and all that stuff uh it's really not that great compared to the BVM and the T90M. You can you can definitely, at, at range in a haul down fight, given the slower reverse gear and stuff of the VT4 specifically, like you're gonna be able to, to slam the, the breach of a 99 or a VT4 or whatever much easier, more accurately than the BVM and the 90. So it's got more glaring weaknesses, although I will say the upper front plate is at a better angle it's more like the abrams so that coupled with the era i'm sure stops a couple of rounds better even after you lose the era so if you're playing a really extended uh fight out in like like a sniping kind of environment where you're firing at a longer range and you're trading shots more uh, the 99 definitely can probably take a shot to the upper front plate after the era has gone longer than something like the, the t72 or stuff but like I said, it's got its own weird quirks and weaknesses compared to the the other Eastern variety. But I would definitely say, personally, like it is an A tier, but their weaknesses are almost B tier compared to the the T90M and the BVM. Like they're still solid. They still have decent frontal mobility, and honestly, they look really cool. Like get the Battlefield Four vibes. Um, but it's it's really it's genuinely just really bad compared to these two but i'm going to leave it at a tier because it is so similar to the t90m uh in terms of overall like firepower performance and all that and also like if i had to rank them from their like how i've placed them here i would say that the 122 is here the 287 is here and then the bvm is here because because of the spall liner changes the t90m having the spall liner as well really doesn't become a factor enough for me in survivability it's just in terms of aggression and all that stuff, the T90M is still an A tier vehicle. Um, I would I would definitely put it over the M1A2 though, personally, because of the glaring turret ring weak point on the Abrams. Um, but the Abrams is definitely better than the 99. Let's not get that confused. And the VT4 and all that. Um, the Challenger 3, I'm going to put the Challenger 3 and the Black Knight on here just because I figured I'd take a screenshot of these. The Challenger 3 has the L55 gun, the Black Knight. Obviously has the native, the British Royal Ordnance, whatever the hell it's called, the their 120, uh, their rifled gun. So the Challengers in particular, this is an interesting thing. The last three Challengers in the tech tree, the 3, the 2E, and the Black Knight, have all removed any added weight from their the stupid Romor armor packages or whatever the fuck it's called. 
<laughs> from the earlier Challenger 2s. The earlier Challenger 2s are like genuinely like C or D tier um, because of all that extra armor really not doing anything. Uh, the Challengers are in a weird spot because I've seen people like Cave Nub over on Twitch. He's a pretty cool guy. You should check him out as well. He is honestly very good in the Challenger 3 when I was watching him play it during patch week. Like, I mean, he's just a great player anyways, but the Challenger is like, if you know what you're doing, it's very similar to the Arietti. Like, obviously you have more turret armor than the Arietti to stop shots in the turret, but losing all that extra armor and stuff, you pretty much turn into as easy to penetrate as like a Challenger 1 at that point, pretty much. So while the Challenger 2s do still have decent amount of armor coverage on the upper front plate and the turret ring, losing a lot of that extra shit on the lower plate or the sides probably it's not going to help you stop like a whiffed shot or like an ATGM coming in or something like that as easily, uh, I would say, as the earlier challengers. So they're, for me personally, they're B tier, uh, but they're kind of like a B plus almost, like specifically the Black Knight, because the Black Knight has, um, it has active protection. The one thing that the, that the Challenger 2s have that the Challenger 3 does not is because this is a tank demonstrator. Uh, it doesn't actually have some interesting shit like a spall liner. So the Challenger 2s having a spall liner puts them, like, I would say maybe the Black Knight is actually a low A, the lowest A tier uh, MBT so far. But the Challenger 3 um, not having that spall liner really damages its potential survivability. Um, so it just, to me, it becomes like a 2A6, but it's a Challenger. Like, you have really decent armor on the turret. Uh, the upper front plate is manageable as well, but um, it's just, it's got some quirks that it doesn't have, like the spell liner. It doesn't have active protection. Uh, so the active protection, like the VT4 for the Black Knight, definitely helps it out. So I'll, I rearrange that. This will be the low, lowest A we have so far, while the Challenger 3 is, is B tier. But like I said, K, like somebody like Cave Nub, he can, he can make this thing an S tier. But it to me, for like the average player experience here, what we're kind of talking about i mean it's it's really not that great the leclerc this is the azure pi package i think from the picture um so i'm gonna put the leclerc azure here in a tier i'm gonna put it uh you know what honestly the leclerc is such a solid tank i'm gonna put it on the high a tier the leclerc series 21 has commander thermal so this might seem like a weird personal nitpick because, I mean, this is all just my opinion from my experience and all that stuff. But the Leclerc Series 21 is the only Leclerc in the game that has Commander Thermal. If you play Sim specifically, it's probably even more helpful. But in RB, I like to poke out with tanks that have a high thermal camera, like the 122B PLSS with that funny raised up one. Um, and kind of get a good overview of the ridge line before I push, and it really helps me look for targets. Especially, like, now Gaijin removed night battles, but instead we got the shitty mist stuff that requires thermal anyways. So, like, at all times. So I'm usually, with commander sites, I like to sit in the commander site because it doesn't have the same mouse acceleration thing that gunner view does. It's a little bit more nimble as well because of the FOV. Like, when you're in Gunner View, if you move your mouse around really quickly versus in Commander View, you'll see the difference. Um, so, Commander View is really good for just driving around and constantly looking and scanning a certain uh, direction. Obviously, you're limiting your field of view still compared to just driving in third person. But in the event that you're playing on a shitty map or a shitty weather map, I would rather take the Siri 21. So, for me, the Siri 21 is an S tier personally, while the Azure and the Leclerc S2 and S1 are A tier. Uh, they all have just gunner thermal. It's still good solid thermal, and the Leclerc's round is fucking amazing. The The velocity, I would say the Leclerc is on par with the Russians in terms of long-range sniping with the, the optics and the, the velocity of the, of the shell. So the Leclerc Azure is A, the Leclerc Siri 21 would be up here in the S tier, which I should have taken a screenshot of that one, actually, but... Whatever, just keep in mind that the Leclerc is basically an S tier, but the Ezer package weighing it down is, and the fact that it doesn't have Commander Thermal makes it an A tier. Uh, the Merc of a 4M and 4B. The 4M with Active Protection Trophy is very good. Um, 
the Merkavas, I feel like they probably have more armor than they really do in the game. I know that for the while, the Mark IV LIC, the low intensity combat, Gaijin forgot to, in air quotes, fix its armor. So it had like the projected turret protection of the Merkava, not the in game, like balanced protection of the Merkava. So you literally could not penetrate the turret. I'm a firm believer that the Merkava is in a weird situation where it could be very, very good, but its armor scheme is just not as good as what it probably realistically is. Um, the Merkava's mobility is very good. That's the the really good uh, kicker there with the Merkava's. Their mobility is great. I would say it's on par with the Leopards and everything, um, if not even maybe a little bit better because of the armor package specifically. <laughs> but uh, uh, the Merkava's in a weird spot for me as well. I would say that the Merkava and the Leclerc as are Sarah like the the top of a tier um they do have uh what is it seal 3143 or m 332 and 338 is the the israeli designation which i guess is the real designation the italian one should be changed as well technically whatever um the Merkavas do have a very powerful round they're kind of like a glass cannon as well and i can't recall somebody will have to correct me in the comments but i believe the Merkavas received a rate of fire buff because before they had like an aced reload of 6.7 seconds which was stupid for an mbt that had like some weaknesses that the other ones don't i find it weird that the Merkavas are running around with an aced reload of 6.7 while for years other nato mbts have had six like the leopard used to have 6.7 the 2a6 to balance its reload because it was too good back in the day it was just like for a little historical lesson here again, the T80 BVM, while it was very good, a lot of people still had just the T80U and people weren't used to being able to press W or weren't used to not being able to press the W key in a Russian MBT and actually get lol penned uh, before. So Leopard's, the Leopard 2A6 stomped for quite a long time because people just had to get used to a shifting meta. The, the 2A6 in that round was definitely a meta, a meta shift defining moment in the game. Um, so weird t little historical tangent over, but yeah, um, back to the Merkava, the, the round is solid and all that stuff. And the, the round or the reload, if the reload is six seconds ace now, it, it would be a very good tank when it's aced and spade and all that. Um, in the active protection, obviously. So I'm going to leave it there. I would say that it's, it's still better a little bit than the t90m but probably not as good as the leclerc in terms of like especially like long range performance haul down though i'm sure the four could actually probably pull off a pretty decent haul down fight uh in like a long engagement but the hull armor is just like it's way too easy to pen the hull armor even with the fuel tank and engine changes to where they eat a bunch of spalling and stuff realistically if you're looking at the merkava if you shoot the lower half of the upper front plate you're probably not going to pen if you just shoot above where the driver's head would be, you're pretty much guaranteed to kill the tank. So the Merkava just, it's a pretty solid MBT, but its weaknesses make it still an A tier, not an S tier. The Type 10. Um, now, the Type 10 is an interesting case. The Type 10, I think, still has problems with its transmission and its acceleration is a little bit wonky. Um, but overall, the Type 10, I would say, is the best gap between... A glass cannon and a decently tanky mbt um, the armor on the type 10 is really protected in certain spots but not in others the main factor of the type 10 is the fact that you're having a four second auto loader you have the fastest reload in the entire game at top tier so uh of all the mbts obviously so the type 10 personally for me is an s tier tank in terms of just pure raw killing power but it's on the lowest end of the S tier because it can't tank as much as the other MBTs here can. I find the Type 10 on paper to look like it has a lot of armor, but usually when I see a Type 10, I can pretty much, if he's not hauled down, I just shoot the lower hull and he's dead anyways. You you hit the driver and you clip the feet of the gunner or commander, whichever one's behind him, uh, it's pretty much game over. You hit the turret ring for the Type 10 specifically, like, and that thing can't fire back at you. It's over. If you get a mobility kill on the Type 10 and he whiffs his first shot, or like if he if he shoots you, whiffs his first shot, you shoot him, you whiff your first shot, he's going to kill you nine times out of ten. So it's 
that's how the type 10 is to me personally it's if you don't if you don't disable the gun on the type 10 or kill it in one shot anyways the type 10 is going to win almost every engagement i think you could put pretty much anybody in a type 10 and tell them to go have fun and they're they're probably going to have fun because the reload and the round is just it's just solid now finally my boy my sad sad little boy the arietti ariat ariette whatever the hell it is i don't remember as an italian i showed that's a insult but um the amv is this one specific picture the ariettes arietti um the AMV, I would say, is the weakest of the three. The C1 War is the best for hull down because it has the add-on package. The PSO is the best for, like, maybe baiting somebody to shoot the appliquer on a corner because they think it's the hull. Um, I've done that once or twice. That's very funny to do. The PSO armor package is kind of useless 99.9% 9 .9 of the time because there's not enough armor on the Ariettes to back up um, that. So... The unbiased me would probably have to put the Arietti down here at B tier. None of these MBTs are glaringly that bad <clears throat> to be in like C or D tier. Like they're just not, I mean, they're not garbage enough for me personally. Um, the AMV actually, if you wanted to go that way, the AMV is a C tier <laughs> if you really, really wanted to punish it. But I would say, I would say the Arietti is, is the lower of B tier here between that and the Challenger 3. I would say they actually the the Challenger three and the area they have very very similar play styles. They have enough armor to maybe stop a whiff if you're using the war kit that is on the turret. If you're at like a ranged engagement, the war kit works. Uh, I do have a video of me slapping people, even though I lost the match, but it was long range engagement. I really enjoyed it. It was kind of what gave me a little bit of faith in War Thunder again. Um, but. You could see in that video, like, I was going up against Leopards, and whether they were firing DM-33, DM-53, whatever, I was still able to tank quite a number of shots on a downslope from them. So, at that range, the war kit was pretty good. The, like I said, the PSO is pretty much useless 9 times out of 10. And the AMV, the AMV, while it has an improved engine, and if you put them side by side, all three of them, there is definitely a noticeable difference in the acceleration of the AMV, the fact that you don't have any added protection means that if somebody shoots you and it kills you, it kills you. If they shoot you and they whiff it for whatever reason, you're probably still going to die in the follow-up shot if you don't kill them because the Arietti just can't, it just can't eat rounds. The, the ammo rack is just in such a glaring weak point in the tank. It's basically takes up like 40% of the side profile if you look at it in the main fighting compartment like the arietti just isn't it's not that good me personally if you look at my arietti stats in game for the c1 war which is the one i played the most obviously if you remove all of the bullshit ka50 deaths from when the k50 was 10.7 <laughs> and was basically able to fight a team with no way to counter it uh my kd in the arietti would be three to one so, like, just just pointing that out there, that's how much of a masochist I am in the C1 war. Like, if I if it wasn't for K50s and MiG20s and a little bit of MiG27s later on, my KD would be three to one in that thing. So, that's just a testament to how some people can pull that bullshit off. But in my experience of playing the AMV, it was the worst of the three. I would play even if I have the AMV, which I'm like a quarter of the way there researching it. I was researching other shit. So I still don't have it, but I had it on a test drive, so it's fully spaded waiting for me. Um, but even if I had the AMV in my lineup, until Gaijin just says fuck it uh, and goes back on their word, because they said they wanted to add the other AMV prototypes, the, the 2 and the 3, and they wanted to basically do what they did to the C1 productions. They wanted to take one AMV and be this one. So this AMV is basically, think about it, it's the pre-series. While the eight, the part, uh, the prototype two and three are like the C1 War and the C1 PSO, or they might combine the 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 two packages because the AMV project is supposed to be an upgraded engine, and then later on, um, later on they uh, decided to mount both packages simultaneously. <laughs> so the the AMV is just garbage the c1 uh, war and pso would be if if this was the amv 
the Z1 in PSO, definitely the, the the war kit would be would be in between that and the Challenger. So the unfortunate circumstance for the Italians is that at some point they're probably going to have to order two A8s, uh, which I think they are doing in real life. So Italy's probably going to get its own Leopard two uh, A uh, seven or eight or something like that in the future. Um, I still enjoy the Air Yeti personally. It's my favorite tank from when I was a wee lad playing Armored Warfare, but uh it's it's just in an unfortunate state if 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 for some reason gaijin decided to get rid of the bullshit that they're doing with the amvs and they just give this one the ability to mount pso and war kit together as like a rank four modification um or if they'd make it like pso is rank three and war is rank four and then there's a fourth option to mount both of them together or something I would much rather have that and they just leave the Italian tech tree as it is currently and then maybe add a leopard later on or something um, than, than what the fuck they, they did to this thing because it's it's stupid. It's the worst MBT in the game, hands down, uh, out of out of all the competition. If you can make it work, congratulations, you're a masochist like me. But uh, the this is the thing I was kind of hinting at earlier in the video the abrams getting a rate of fire buff where's the abrams here the abrams getting a rate of fire buff because it has bad stats is bullshit because if it wasn't for masochists like me with a three to one kd in the air yeti this would be the one with a five second reload personally i think the air yeti should still get a rate of fire buff it wouldn't it wouldn't change the fact that it's got such glaring just everything um but the fire control system you have Gen 2, I think it is, or high-res Gen 2 or Gen 3 thermals on both the gunner and the commander. So overall comfortability for me personally, the Air Yetis just have decent... They, they've always had, even before other MBTs got added, the Air Yeti was the one with like the highest-res thermals for a while. So it was like it was to me, it was the best tank to play, and I've always enjoyed playing it. I still do. I can play top-tier America all day long, get my ass kicked by like other top-tier nations or something and hate myself but the moment i go to the air yeti i'm gonna do 10 times better than i am in all these others because i'm just i'm just used to it i'm just a masochist so yeah unfortunately that's what it is i'm sure you probably saw if you know me by now you probably saw this little tangent <laughs> coming from a mile away uh but yeah i mean it's unfortunate like the air yeti's not going to be great even after some changes but i would much rather gaijin just give them shit than than just leave the amv in this naked state it's just stupid the mobility really doesn't carry it it's it's the glass cannon of all glass cannons but the type 10 is another glass cannon and it does everything the air yeti does better unfortunately it reloads quicker it it hits just as hard and it has more armor protection so you're more you're more likely to get a, a lucky break so yeah but that is the final tier list for the most part. I'm just looking it over once more. I'm sure a lot of you probably think that the Leclerc and maybe the Merkavar are S tier. Or T90M if you're... Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but for me, this is what I would say personally in terms of what I've how I've seen people play these MBTs and how I personally have also played them. This is how I would... Uh, I would rank them. The 122B is B plus specifically. They're they're just king. It's just king. The 2A7 is a close second, but the B plus is just king. I haven't even played the B plus, but the B PLSS and the A are basically the exact same thing. They just don't have all the extra chonky side armor. That's literally like the only difference. Uh, but man, it is just it's a beast of an MBT. It's in terms of camos the. The 122Bs look the best um, out of the entire game for me personally. They have some of the most freaking raw camos in the game. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys agree or disagree, uh, just feel free to leave it in the comments to let me know what you think. If you think that one of these MBTs probably should have been in a different spot, uh, I mean, go ahead and make the argument. But for me personally, this is how I see them in game. Uh yeah <laughs> the chinese man like the mbts they look great they give such battlefield uh battlefield four vibe vibes but i i don't know man they they have such a glaring weakness over the russian mbts it's it's kind of silly uh but yeah anyways guys 
I appreciate it if you made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching. As always, uh, leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.